Okay, good morning. Today I'm going to show you a new thing that I added for the film of the week, the Hitchhiker, an interactive map. Then I'm going to remind you that this week we have the viewing notes for the Hitchhiker that are due on Friday, but next week, next Friday, you're doing something different, your first film essay. So I'll talk about that briefly now and then again next week. I'm going to introduce today the first of four choices for the final paper. There are four films. They are not films presented during the semester that are presented like the other films. You have to apply to different films that belong to the road movie genre, the same kind of criteria for analysis and show that you've learned how to analyze a road movie in order for you to have a sense of which of those four should work for you. I'm going to introduce each one of them, one per week, starting with this week, talking about the story, but also talking about some of the themes you may want to analyze. At the end of the class, with the time I have left, I will continue and complete my analysis of The Hitchhiker. So what you see here is my first ever attempt at uh, producing a my map, a Google map with all the destinations planned and uh, actual destinations of the characters in The Hitchhiker. It's an interactive map, even from inside the page, you can zoom in and out. For example, in here, you, and, and then you can click and find some information. For example, this is the place, the Chocolate Mountains in Arizona, where Roy and Gilbert, the two friends that will become hostages to the evil Emmett Myers, are supposed to go fishing at the beginning of the film before they deviate from their itinerary. So, you can look at it, it works from a computer, a phone, it doesn't matter, right? And, and you have their full itinerary. I haven't done anything similar for Il Sorpasso, but you do find a more traditional itinerary. In this case, it is not interactive. I just put the stops along the way for the journey taken by the two characters in next week's film in Sorpasso. Okay, so they start from Rome and they go through uh, some of the areas on the shores of Lazio and Tuscany to their final destination. And as you can see, I populated the page for week five with all the contents, the readings, the assignments. As usual, you find frames taken from the film. This time I had to break it into two because this film, being a more modern film, is slightly longer, an hour and 40 minutes, so plenty of frames. Even if you take them at two seconds interval, you have more than 3,000 at the end. And you have some required and some optional readings. I just want to call your attention on the fact that instead of having to write viewing notes, you have to write a short essay. And there will be two more besides this, two more essays. And basically this is the kind of work on a smaller scale that you'll be doing for the paper. So whenever you write the essay and then you look at my feedback, keep in mind that the suggestions and recommendations that I may give you after I review your film essay will probably work for your paper. Okay, so you're training yourself to then write the final essay for the paper. As usual, I put a series of instructions and suggestions. The biggest change is that no bullet points are allowed. You have to 
use the traditional narrative <coughs> format. However, I do suggest that since you still have only two to three pages, you don't waste too much time with a formal generic introduction or a conclusion where you summarize your findings. It's too short for those things. So go straight into the indication of the theme or themes you want to analyze and pick from the usual matrix because your analysis is the analysis of Il Sorpasso, an essay on Il Sorpasso from 1962 as a road movie genre. So not a generic analysis on the film, but exactly focusing on those aspects that define the genre of the road movie. So you could be talking about the destinations, the transformation, etc., etc. But I suggest that you pick just one or two of those uh, points. Then, what else is different from the viewing notes? The fact that instead of having to cover a lot of the film, this is an essay, so the bulk of your essay should be the in-depth analysis or a more in-depth analysis of just two or three scenes or sequences that are key to the understanding of the film. So keep that in mind. In the viewing notes, you cover a lot of the scenes with some comments, some analytical remarks. In the essay, you pick important scenes and you try to use them as a lens, as a filter to understand one of these themes in the whole film. So be selective and be strategic. This time, being an essay, if you want to refer to, mention, or even quote some of the readings on this film, you're welcome to, right? That would be uh, completely appropriate. And you have already appropriate readings inside the page on this film, the page for week five. Just that for now, and then I'll provide some specific tips in reference to this, yes, in this film, its characters next week. As you know, there is now, there has been for, there has been for, for a couple of weeks, a separate page for the uh, films, for the final papers. You find it linked in the go-to section at the end of most pages. It reminds you the basics, the final paper is 30%. It should be between 1,800 and 2,700 uh, words. And again, it is an essay. It is similar to the film essay as a format that you will be writing next week. The points are the usual uh, points. On top of that, I added that it you are encouraged to compare the film that you've chosen to one or more of the films or the situations in the films that were introduced during the semester. In here, you find the four choices for this semester. The first one is Inside Louis Davis, directed by the famous duo, the Cohen Brothers from 2013. And this is what I'll be analyzing today. You find it on Amazon Prime. You can find it on other streaming platforms. Just refer to ju Just Watch for, for that. I've added a few frames. I've added reviews. This is not exactly material that may come handy for the final paper. It's more... The purpose of this is to give you a better sense of what kind of a film this is before you embark in watching this and picking this for the final paper. So the reviews are good reviews that give you a sense of what the movie is about so that you can find whether or not this is a good match for, for you and something you would be comfortable working on. And there are three more, The Man in the Hat from 2020, Nomadland from 2020, Oscar winning films, and Hit the Road from 2022, well, it came out in the US in 2022. So 
in order to understand inside Louis Davis, I've prepared two scenes that I want to show you and a series of frames to illustrate the story and some of the themes. In just a few words, Inside Louis Davis shows us a few days in the life of a struggling folk singer by the name of Louis Davis in February of 1961. Louis is struggling with his career because he has just lost his partner. He was part of a singing duo. His partner committed suicide. So his career is not faring well. It is clear from a social standpoint that people liked his partner much better than they like him. He doesn't have a house. His surfing coaches is moving from one friend to another in the village or the Upper West Side, so in the village with other fellow musicians and singers in the Upper West Side with professors of music. He has a family, but his mother has died. His father is in a nursing home. He has a sister, but they don't get along well. And at some point in the film, there will be a road trip. But this time, the road trip doesn't occupy most of the film. It's a substantial part of the film. But the film itself is all based on the theme of mobility. And that is being suggested even in the long first part before Lewin takes the road with John Goodman playing the part of a jazz musician, Roland... Uh, Turner and his assistant slash driver slash poet, big generation poet, of course, Johnny Five. Even before that, we get a sense that the contrast between settling down and being constantly on the move is deeply inscribed into the story of film. As usual, if we can please lower the <coughs> shades so that we can see more and I'll, of course, lower the lights for the scene. In this scene, Lewin Davis is about to uh, have a meeting, a difficult conversation in a coffee place in New York City with a woman, Jean he was in love with, but they separated. And earlier in the film, she writes his scribbles on a note so that people around them don't know, don't hear that, that she's pregnant. So shows this note, I'm pregnant, but she doesn't want to have this baby. She's with another man, played beautifully by Justin Timberlake, Jim. And since she's not sure whether the baby is uh, Lewin's or Jim's, she wants to have an abortion. That's the, uh, how, how she hates, really, Lewin, that in order to avoid even the possibility that uh, this baby is his baby, she wants to have an abortion. Of course, she wants him to pay for the abortion. It's 1961. Abortion is illegal in New York, but if you have the right amount of cash, you can find a doctor who will uh, do that. And again, keep in mind the theme of the scene, which is also echoing, reflected in the whole movie, settling down or being on the move without rules. The Louis Davis is played by Oscar Isaac, beautiful interpretation. Jean is played by Carrie Mulligan. Notice the colors also. Who won the lottery tonight? There is a palette of pastel colors. Oh, pastel colors. 
Hey, hey. There is another way besides the cat, right? The cat is traditionally associated with the house. Oftentimes, if you go to Europe or if you go to a museum in the US where they have paintings from Europe, you will find the cat in a painting to show attachment to the house. So much so that you find it not only represented inside the house of families, but also inside the representation of convents, right? Domesticity is symbolized by the cat. At the same time, the cat is also a symbol of independence, moving out, going in and out of the house. I'll explain how the cat enters the story, but I want to move to another scene because another way that the film shows you represents the theme of mobility and what comes with it, settling down, finding roots, being connected, is through songs. This is a film about folk songs, about the genre of folk songs and folk music, which in 1961 was about to take off because within five or six years, folk music was big in the US and around the world. It became a global genre. Just think of Bob Dylan, which in fact, is shown at the very end of the film, playing in the same place in the village, the Gaslight Cafe, where uh, Lewin has been also singing and playing guitar. Through the songs that are placed in the film, mostly songs that were created for the film, imita imitating the style of folk music from the period, you also get a sense of the centrality of the film, of, of the theme of mobility. And they do it particularly in, this, in the scene that I'm about to see with a reference to space travel. 1961 is the beginning of the space era, not exactly the beginning, but uh, the, 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 the beginning of the uh, span of years where Space travel became central to American society, getting culminating in the landing on the moon in 1969. And Lewin is called in to replace another musician and play guitar and sing with Justin Timberlake when Justin is recording his song, which will become a big hit, Please, Mr. President. This is one of those songs that was created for the film. And it is a very ironic song about a fearful astronaut who's singing, please, Mr. President, don't send me into space. OK, let me just find it. Uh, yeah, I doubt if it's urgent. Yeah, I'll call him. Thanks. No, no, he sends urgent. It's a session. Always on the move, always on trains, always walking around. What? An incredible song. Whoever thought of the rhyme, libido and widow is a genius. But more importantly, you have to associate the lyrics of the song with the idea you just heard from uh, Jean Carrie Mulligan in the cafe in the scene inside the cafe where she's saying in different ways, you're not going anywhere. And this is about an astronaut who doesn't want to go into space. And Lewin will eventually take a trip to Chicago, hitching a ride with this odd couple, a musician and his assistant who are going on a tour because he wants, he hopes that in Chicago he will get a gig or perhaps uh, even find a producer, but he's not going anywhere. His career is not going anywhere. He will return to New York defeated. He will return to the same place where we see him at the beginning of the film. The film begins and ends in the same place, and in fact, there are two sides 
of the same scene, uh, the, the scene it will become clear to the viewers uh, in the conclusion. So really, he is not going anywhere. The character is not going anywhere. Uh, the last sequence I want to show you is Lewin getting into the car with Roland Turner, musician, and Johnny Five, assistant driver, poet. And there you find some of the situations that we are becoming familiar <clears throat> with in terms of the staples, the main features of a road movie. the car coming to pick him up. This is Johnny Five. Okay, and you had enough of a sense of what happens on the road. Again, we heard a little bit from a song which is about traveling, which continues the general theme of the film, and The Threat by John Goodman. Roland Turner, your career will turn to shit, is actually what is happening now in Louis Davis' life. The reference to his partner, who threw himself uh, to commit suicide from the George Washington Bridge, is another reminder that in the end, it's like people wished really that Louis Davis had died, that the other guy was the good part of the duo, both musically and also. Socially. Let me pull, uh, pull out a presentation with a selection of frames to give you a better sense of the story. This is the first frame from the movie after a uh, slide showing you the name of the place, the Gaslight Cafe, February 1961, and, and it was a place in the village that was famous for this kind of uh, music. Louis Davis is singing, is all taken by the song, and it's a beautiful folk song, but everything we'll see about him and around him contradicts the spirit of the song, right? He's not very folk singing in real life. His personality, his interactions are everything but mellow, like the song would suggest. And the people react fairly well at the beginning because you have to see him going down from that point on, right? People are paying attention and he is called outside at the end of the act uh, because they tell him there is a man who wants to talk to him and this stranger tells him things he doesn't understand. And then before he can really make up what is going on, the guy beats him up very violently and Lewin ends up on the floor. The next scene, we see Lewin in an apartment before we see Lewin on this coach, the what, what the, the, the kind of life that is accustomed to during this period going from a friend's house to another, we see this cat and the cat will be the same or, or not so, uh, that he will carry around a lot and will reappear at the, almost at the end of his road trip. And keep in mind what I said about the symbolic values associated with the cat. Domesticity, familiarity, but also being on the move. And he wakes up. Now, you may think this is the continuation. And in fact, for a long time, you think this is just a continuation of the previous scene. It is not. It is the antecedent 
it is the days leading to the scene that we saw at the beginning of the film and that we will see completed and making sense finally at the end of the film. This is the house of the Upper West Side apartment of a uh, uh, university professor who was a dear friend of, guess whom? His partner. And by extension also a friend of his. So he is in his and is because no one is at home other than him and the cat. He goes around the house and of course the music professor has a lot of discs and he finds this which is the only uh, disc they produce, the LP produced by the duo. This is his partner and if we had wings is a song that we will hear later on also. So we know more about his situation. When he is leaving the apartment, after he left a note saying, sorry, I missed you, thank you for the hospitality, he leaves the apartment, but the, the cat comes out of the apartment, the door shuts behind him, and so now is locked out of the apartment with the cat, and he feels responsible for the cat owned by the professor and his wife, and there is only an elevator man who will not accept the, the care of the cat. So he has to take the cat with him. And in a way, it is the only creature he's really responsible for, right? Because it's not responsible towards his former girlfriend, his family, his agent, etc. And you see the cat accompanying him. And of course, he's always on the move. He doesn't have a place to stay. So he's taking the subway, calling people, going to places where he can stay or play. And you see him in the subway. There is a long sequence of him in the subway with the stations of New York. And you see him going everywhere with the cat. He's going to his former girlfriend's place, the woman who's pregnant. She's not home, so she opens, and the super is not there. So he opens, he goes up the, sta the, the, the emergency staircase and... Uh, opens the window to leave the cat in, and then goes out again. He goes to visit his agent because he's hoping that the, the agent will have money for him because he's done, he, has re, he has remembered from the scene before that he has produced this LP with his partner, and he's saying, do we have any money? Have we sold copies of this? And no, uh, there is no money. The agent offers him a coat because, of course, it's February, it's frigid in New York, and he only has a jacket with, uh, always turned up to protect his neck, right? So he, he offers him a little bit of money, something like $40, uh, but it's clear his career is not going anywhere. That's him offering the, the uh, jacket. And he goes back to the apartment to talk to Jean, and Jean tells him, well, shows this note saying, I'm pregnant. They all go to the same place from the first uh, scene, the Gaslight Cafe, where this friend of theirs is singing another folk song, and here you see Jean, former girlfriend, and probably he's still in love with her, Jim, Justin Timberlake, who's now her fiancé, or in a steady relationship they are, and Lewin. And Lewin is horrified because he thinks this guy is playing horrible music, yet this guy has a career in front of him, and Lewin doesn't. But it's the kind of difficult interaction with fellow musicians that explains why it's not successful. Maybe his skills, his musical skills are good enough. It's his people's skills that are lacking. Okay? And, and then uh, there is this trio singing, uh, the, the friend, Jim, Jim and, and Jim singing another song about a train and longing for, for home. So it's all about being rooted, settling down, and also traveling again, like most of the songs in the film. Uh, and you can see that 
he, Lewin, is still attracted to her. Waking up again, the cat is still there. He hasn't found uh, the time to give it back to the professor. So, especially in this kind of shot, you see this symbolic representation of the attachment of the house to, of, of the cat to a house. Wakes up on another couch, and the guy we saw singing is about to leave and, and go to Fort Dix for his military training, and remember 1961 is the beginning of the engagement of American troops in Vietnam, although in 1961 there weren't too many soldiers on the ground, and, and the, number, the numbers went up, skyrocketed, uh, during the next three years. Okay, but again, he believes in the music he's doing, he believes in the value of serving the country, whereas Lewin is the opposite, right? He cannot believe in anything. He's about to live, and the cat jumps out of the window, runs away. So being on the run, and of course Lewin chases the cat, but cannot find the cat, so the cat is lost, and he goes meet with Jean to arrange the abortion, to discuss what to do, and this is the scene where she says, I don't want to have this baby in case it is your baby. I'd rather uh, uh, not have the baby at all. But she's angry at him, very angry. Okay, And he goes to find his sister, because he's hoping to get the money for the abortion from the sister, we learn here that the house of their parents has been sold, his father is in a nursing home, and he's hoping to get an advance on the money of the house. Uh, they're talking about thousands of dollars already in escrow. However, uh, her, his sister tells him, no, uh, the money will go to the nursing home, will go for, to, the, to the care of the father, so no chance is there. And the sister is suggesting that perhaps he could go back to his profession. We learn here that before becoming a singer, Lewin was a merchant marine, and he stopped doing that. This is when, as we saw before, he goes to the Columbia Records offices and studios to record, please, Mr. President, with Adam Driver and um, Justin Timberlake, and he signs off his rights. And the story of Lewin Davis is all about missed opportunities. For example, when he was with his sister, the sister says, I have a box of things from the house, your stuff. What do you want to do with that? And he says, throw it out. But afterwards, after the box has been thrown out, we'll find out that his Merchant Marine card membership was there. And by the end of the movie, when it seems like the only solution might be for him to go back to a ship. He's missing that card. He can get a new card from the Union, but that would be $85, and he doesn't have that kind of money. In this case, he is eager to have money to pay for the abortion. So instead of uh, uh, signing a contract for the royalties, which would come later on, he gets a, a fee, a fixed fee of $200, and then later on, of course, we find out that the song was a big hit and that is missed on this opportunity. <clears throat> we saw the scene in the cafe, which is one of the most important in the film. You're not going anywhere. And that's where he runs out and sees a cat and he thinks that it is the same cat. But of course it isn't. And it, it's not even the right gender. This is him going to this guy. He knows to arrange for the abortion. And he goes in, talks to the doctor. And the doctor says, yes, okay, she can come on a Saturday. Because he, he does these things on his side. Clandestine abortions. But he says, no need to pay. And this is when we learn that Louis Davis had paid $300 earlier two years, three years uh, uh, earlier, for an abortion uh, for another woman in his life. However, the woman never had the abortion. Uh, the doctor didn't know where he was because he doesn't have an address and couldn't send the money back. And he's saying, okay, it's already paid. So the next is on me. The next abortion 
is of me. And this is where we learn that there is the possibility of a house, of roots for him, that this girl has a kid by him. Uh, they probably live in Akron, Ohio. And by the end of the movie, he will go through a stretch of road where we see Akron. And this is where, eventually, we will see again the cat, which will keep appearing and disappearing. We will see a cat with a similar color on the road. And um, he will try to avoid running over the cat. So he goes back to his friends. And this is another part of the film where we see how uh, it is impossible for him to connect socially with regular people. He sings a song, but when the wife of the professor, who was really attached to his partner, sings the part that would have been sung by his partner, uh, Lewin gets mad at the only people who support him, who show some affection to him. And then she finds out that the cat he returned is not the right cat. It says, well, but this is not a, a male cat. So it cannot be Ulysses. Ulysses was their cat. And, and of course, he's surprised, is never prepared. And this is where he finds this ride with these guys. And you've seen how what happens in the car is similar to what we found so far and we'll see more of, that inside the car, that's the place for storytelling. It's a place with no clear social rules, a place for storytelling, fictionalizing one's life and identity, pretending from the very beginning. Uh, John Goodman, uh, his character is very theatrical. When he offers his name, clearly he has the tempo of a theatrical line. And he tells a lot of stories about his life while touring. And it's clear that he's fictionalizing those stories, that he's making himself into a character, right? And there is also the part uh, with, with the gaps that become significant. For example, the long stops at the bathrooms. And later on, we understand why because he's going to the bathroom to take drugs and not coming out until the drugs uh, have uh, uh, exhausted their effect because while drugged, he cannot even walk. And he's performing, right, acting inside the car and taking the wheel like we've seen with other characters, sleeping, more stops, uh, more, more road, and the cat's still with him. They visit the same kind of non-places that we see in road movies, right? These places which are ready for the people driving by, but they suggest the opposite of socialization, right? In this case, the place being almost completely empty. And again, he goes to the bathroom. Lewin goes to the bathroom. He hears a sound, goes out, and you see how he is injecting himself with some kind of probably morphine, right? Using this uh, to prepare his arm for the injection so we understand what was going on and Johnny Five and Lewin help him out. Then they continue. At some point, the police stops them. This is the flashlight of the police. The police finds that Johnny Five is intoxicated and clearly Johnny Five is himself a stoner. Uh, and the police arrests Johnny Five. You see from inside the car, Johnny Five is being taken out of the police, and who's left in the car? Uh, the, the musician John Goodman, who's asleep, the cat, and uh, Lewin, and Lewin decides to leave them. He lives by himself, this time without the cat, at least the musician who's asleep or maybe half dead because of the drugs, we don't know, continues hitching a ride and of course he's not prepared for the frigid winter Chicago is even worse than, she, than New York and he goes to a diner similar to the diners we see in other road movies he's completely unprepared his uh, uh, socks are drenched he finds the address of a place where he wants to see a famous producer and nightclub owner he spends the night at the station where he's thrown out finds this place finally, goes in, and you see 
this guy, he sings a song, and the guy tells him, well, you're not good. Maybe in a duo, you might work as a musical duo. So once again, everyone is telling him that is nothing without his partner, and this is where I have to stop. As far as the hitchhiker, to help you with the viewing notes, you can review the notes that I left on that film that might help you understand the film even a little better. So, deadline for the viewing notes of the Chiker is this Friday. And let me know between now and Friday if you need any help. Enjoy the rest of your day.